Hello and welcome to Sky Arts Theatre Live and to the last of our exclusive live plays. Tonight, something very special to finish us off. It's written by the best-selling author Michael Dobbs and it's based on real events of 1938, the consequences of which still reverberate. It's called The Turning Point. It's directed by Fiona Laird. It stars Matthew Marsh and Benedict Cumberbatch. And this is Sky Arts Theatre Live. Hello and welcome to Sky Arts Theatre Live. I'm Sandy Toxvig and I make it coming up to one minute past nine. And welcome to the last of our live plays. Tonight we go all the way back to 1938 and to a hitherto little-known meeting that may just have changed the course of history. Called The Turning Point, it's based on a true story unearthed by the best-selling author Michael Dobbs. And it tells of a time when a sidelined, brooding and powerless Winston Churchill met with a young BBC producer called Guy Burgess and what happened between the two of them altered history and what happened to each of them couldn't be more striking one became the revered symbol of British patriotic defiance that saved this country in its darkest hour while the other became a quarter of the infamous Cambridge spy ring whose treachery led to the death of many agents and also caused great damage to both this country and to our allies so let's find out how Michael came to grips with these pivotal and historical characters of the 20th century Michael Dobbs's first novel, House of Cards, launched the career of the villainous Francis Urquhart, one of the most memorable fictional characters of recent years. Michael's other novels include Goodfellow MP, The Buddha of Brewer Street, and Whispers of Betrayal. Before becoming an author, he was at Mrs. Thatcher's side as she took her first step into Downing Street as Prime Minister, and was a key aide to John Major when he was voted out. His most recent book was the highly acclaimed Winston's War, shortlisted for the Channel 4 Political Book of the Year Award. I'm one of those silly people who've never had a proper job. I, you know, I've done things in journalism, I was, uh, I was a political hack for many years. I was deputy chairman of something called the Conservative Party um, and its chief of staff. It's all seemed a good training ground for what I, I now do. I write. I decided I wanted to be interviewed here because in the cabinet war rooms as part of the Churchill Museum, because this for me is a place of wonder. I've written many novels about the old man, Winston Churchill. I kind of feel as if I, I know him, as if he's almost like a great uncle to me. Uh, I imagine him at times sitting right beside me as a warm-blooded, flesh-and-blood individual, not that cardboard cut-out character, the, the statesman that we all think that we know. I, I see him as a, as a troubled man, actually, because I know him so well, instead of him just lecturing me, and he used to lecture quite a lot, I, I see him as, a, as an old relative asking me for a bit of advice because his life's a bit of a mess. Not the public life, although that often was a mess, but his private life. He was to me always a, a wounded warrior. And this is what Churchill carved out as his wartime headquarters because, of course, in the middle of the Blitz, Downing Street Number 10 Downing Street was bombed. I mean, there's a very good chance they, they wouldn't have survived had they simply stayed there. So they dug out this extraordinary complex beneath the Treasury. And it was here, in this very room, right behind me was Winston's seat that he ran the cabinet, the war cabinet from. I've got half an hour to encapsulate just a few moments of time. And the intensity with which you have to write, the sensitivity with which you have to write, the, the fact that every line, it, it's a bit like poetry, every line has to mean something. Perhaps that's why I've been cautious about getting into it in the past. And perhaps that's why I've enjoyed the process so much, because I've learned so much through it. These people, the, the, this clique, this group, which included Burgess, at the end of the day did huge amounts of damage. They gave yeah. the Soviets all sorts of information about people, which ended up lots of people getting put up yeah. against all and shot. I'm old enough to remember all those wonderful things that you used to get on, perhaps in black and white, on the BBC. And I mentioned it to one or two people, and they all said the same thing. Why hasn't it been done before? Why have we had to wait 30 years for this? I feel very much the same. Just because it's not entirely in control, the gods have a little word to whisper in our ears while we're doing all this. And I think it's wonderful. 
So how do you go about casting, let alone playing such iconic and well-known figures from history? And more importantly, how do you stage such an important historical event that up until recently has remained a secret? Well, we caught up with the director Fiona Laird and her cast to find out how they tackled the challenge. Cast rehearsals for Turning Point took place at the Orange Tree Theatre in Richmond, Surrey. Director Fiona Laird has an extensive range of experience. Most recently, she was at the helm of the last five years at the Haymarket. They're playing our song and the common pursuit for the Menier Chocolate Factory. She directed Stephen Fry's Cinderella at the Old Vic, as well as Musical for Channel 4, where she was also director of their theatre director scheme. She was appointed associate director at Greenwich Theatre in 2005. Some of Fiona's other credits include Oh, What a Lovely War, Peter Pan and Guys and Dolls for the National Theatre. The cast of Matthew Marsh and Benedict Cumberbatch spent three weeks rehearsing for tonight's performance. Me? I have no intention of standing in line for anything, least of all having my balls shot away. Why are you here? I'm supposed to ask for your help with the programme about security in the Mediterranean. My help? Is this Lord Reith's idea of a joke? Exactly. That was it. In the last year I've, I've played F.W. de Klerk and then I've played Bill Clinton on the radio, so it's obviously my time for playing political leaders of the world. As he said to Clemmy when, when, when he lost the 1945 election, he, and, and, and Clemmy said, darling, it's, 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 um, um, it's a blessing in disguise. He said, well, if it is a blessing, it is very well disguised. <laughs> <laughs> the better the script is, the easier your job is, and Michael Dobbs has written a really, really tight, very, very good two-hander, so that takes away some of the, uh, the, the worry of playing a great leader. I think when you're playing someone who actually existed in history, there's always a danger of an impersonation rather than an interpretation. That's sort of what I would try to lean more towards. I think in the case of Burgess, there's not an awful lot of first-hand footage. Burgess was, um, he was almost the Nick Robinson of his day. The man at the centre of Westminster, he was the producer of, of, of this very important program, The Week in Westminster, at a time when Westminster was a very small village. You know, he came from the right background, he was, he was Eton, he was Cambridge, I mean, so... Yeah, he knew you know, everyone, didn't he, yeah, as well? He, he was he absolutely, absolutely brilliant. brilliant. And he had to know everybody as a result of his job. But also, he was a great socialising, he loved throwing parties. I think it's harder for Matthew because he's playing someone whose voice is very much part of his identity and movement, everything about Churchill. Is, is, he's, a, he's a very imposing uh, physical icon. Um, and I'm, I'm slightly let off the hook in that regard. From my point of view of playing him, there are, there are two things, not that I want to get into territory of impersonation, but I would like to know, for interpretation's sake, what, a little bit more about how he held himself, mm. what, what he sounded like, and there's very little, if, if any, archive We've tried to, to, find to hunt down. The Burgess that we are talking about now is a much softer, nicer, mm. gentler, more genuine article than the one yeah, we were that we all about, remember. And slightly, slightly more naive. I'm Joyce Nettles and I'm a casting director and I've cast these six plays for Sky. Casting a real person as Churchill in this last play is always difficult because the public have a perception. It's like casting the Queen or Princess Diana, anybody like that. And whilst a producer and a director might say, look, we don't want an impersonation of that person, you can't go to the other extreme and say, well, any old actor can do it. You have to get some semblance of, of likeness. When I took this job on, I was slightly concerned that actors might be reluctant to, to accept the fear factor. <laughs> and going live, that was something that I thought might put them off. My fears that actors wouldn't want to do this were completely unfounded. And as the series has progressed this year, more and more interest has been generated and more and more actors have called me and more and more agents have called me to say that they'd like to do one. So I think if it went again, there will be huge interest. I'm terrified about the idea of it being broadcast tonight, but that was one of the reasons I really wanted to do it. It's a sort of challenge that, well, certainly my generation hasn't had at all. Live. <laughs> Nobody ah. told me. Ah. Nobody told me this was going out live. It's a good thing, it'll help raise awareness and concentration in the game and also the joy for an audience of knowing that there's that th added thrill to seeing what they're seeing being made live. It's, it's very exciting. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to go through an incredibly nerve-wracking experience again as an actor. And I mean, I, I, I just hope that I can handle the bricklaying in the play and the pouring the drinks without shaking uncontrollably.